Okay, so if you're taking any sort of algebra class, you're definitely going to have to handle a problem like this. And what we have is the square root of 2 times the square root of 75. So we want to do this problem, but we don't want to use our calculator. So put your calculators away. And if you know how to do this problem, put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the solution uh, to this in just one second. But uh, what we're talking about here, the, the topic is uh, square roots. But really, this little symbol right here, most of you would say, oh, that's a square root symbol. It is a square root symbol, but technically, in algebra, we would call this a radical, because that's what we're talking about. So we're talking about how to multiply square roots or multiply radicals. So that is the topic. I'm going to walk you through step by step how to get the right answer to this. But uh, anyways, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in mathematics, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that struggle in math. Maybe you had a very difficult time with math. I'm telling you, I've been teaching this uh, <laughs> subject for a long, long time. You can do very well in math, but what you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe some sort of special test, that you're preparing for, something like the uh, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, Teacher Certification Exam, GED, or if you homeschool, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have 100 plus different math courses that cover all these various categories. It will help you out big time. Now, you should be taking awesome math notes right now. If you're not, work on improving your notes. That's really important to be uh, successful in math. But in the meantime, you can use my notes. I'm going to leave links to those in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you the solution to this uh, problem right now. And then you can see how well you know this stuff. And there you go. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 75 is equal to 5 times the square root of 6. That is the correct answer. And if you got this answer, let me give you a nice little happy face and A plus and a 100%, and we'll throw in a few stars so you can have an extra special day. Nice job, okay? All right, so not that difficult of a problem, but let's go ahead and get into why uh, the square root of 2 times the square root of 75 is equal to this. And again, the topic here is multiplying uh, square roots or multiplying radicals. Okay, so when you're studying radicals and square roots, there's various different properties that you need to know. I'm not going to cover them all in this one particular video because we're just focusing in on multiplication but this is one very very important property that you need to understand about this about square roots and radicals and it goes like this the square root of a okay times the square root of b is equal to the square root one big square root of a times b okay so uh, if we have two or more little square roots and they're all square roots we could just write one big square root and multiply those values that are underneath those uh, square roots so uh, it's very important that you realize and you don't confuse this rule with this kind of situation. Let me kind of break it down like this. So what if I had the cube root of 7? Can I multiply it by the square root of 5? In other words, can I go like this, 7 times 5? I'm just kind of following this rule. And, of course, you can see I said no. Okay. The reason why this is uh, you can't do this because this is the cube root and this is the square root. There's actually a little 2 right here. OK, so this rule only applies when you're dealing with the exact same radical. So in other, so in other words, here, if I had the cube root of 7 times the cube root of 5, could I apply this rule? Yes. So this rule uh, applies not only to square roots, but in this situation as well. So this would be the cube root of 7 times 5. OK, so again, uh, this is a property of radicals that you need to uh, know and not be confused with. All right, so uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and apply this uh, property to this problem right here because these are both uh, two square roots, and let's see how this works. Okay, so here we have the square root of 2 times the square root of 75. So uh, we're going to write these two separate square roots as one big square root of 2 times 75. Okay, so 2 times 75 is 150. So if, uh, some of you may have put the answer, the square root of 150. Okay, so if you put that down as your answer, I'm going to give you like a little like straight face. Okay, uh, that's like, okay, you're definitely on the right track, but you're not done. When you're dealing with square roots, it's imperative 
that you simplify those radicals. You simplify uh, those uh, uh, values because your teacher is going to want you to understand how to do that. It would be very much like uh, you doing a fraction problem and uh, leaving your answer as 30 over 50. Okay, your teacher is going to be like, listen, you need to reduce that and simplify that to three fifths. Okay, so you don't leave your answers unsimplified in mathematics. We always, uh, it's kind of, you know, part of the problem to fully simplify your um, solutions. So even though the square root of 150 is technically the product, okay, of square root of 2 times square root of 75, we need to see if we can simplify this. So we're not done yet. And uh, to determine whether we can simplify this, you need to be thinking about perfect squares, okay? Uh, so these are perfect squares, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. Now, why are these perfect squares? Because all these numbers, we can, uh, when we take the square root of them, we end up with these lovely numbers like 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, etc. okay? So when we square these nice uh, integer values, uh, these are perfect squares. So why do we care about perfect squares? Well, when we look at this number, 150, uh, when we're trying to simplify it, we want to ask, is uh, any of these numbers, any of these perfect squares, a factor of 150? In other words, can 150 be divided by any of these numbers? Okay, so you're kind of thinking about that. If it can, it's a factor. So some of you might be saying, oh, it could be divided by 25, okay, because 25 times 6 is 150, so we have a perfect square factor. So we're going to have to address that now. Okay, so the square root of 150 is the same thing as 25 times 6. So we're going to use that property in re uh, reverse. The square root of A times B is equal to the square root of A times the square root of B. So we can put two small square roots together under one big square root, or we can break up a big square root of... Uh, uh, the factors here into their individual, this product into their individual factors like this. So we can do this uh, the same property in reverse. So we're going to kind of break apart this one big square root into two square roots. So this is the square root of 25 times the square root of 6. Because if I was to multiply this, I would get back to this. But the benefit of doing that is I could take the square root of 25. The square root of 25 is 5. So this is going to be 5 times the square root of 6. And that is how we get the right answer. Okay, so kind of covered um, a few different things here. Really important that you understand how to simplify radicals. Okay, this is going to be uh, important for all different sorts of radical and square root problems. So again, you need to understand about those uh, perfect squares. And one uh, thing I would say is this, if you're new to this stuff, watching me do um, uh, math, you know, watching me solve problems, and you're like, oh, I get that. I don't have to do this because I'm sure the next time I'll see this on a test or quiz or homework, I could do it myself. No, that's not the case. It would be like you trying to uh, learn how to shoot a basketball by watching someone else uh, shoot basketballs. So that person shooting basketballs all day long, you're like, oh, wow, that person's doing really good. Therefore, I've watched exactly how they <laughs> they uh, were shooting the basketball, so therefore I can do it. That's not the case. Okay, The only way you're going to get better at anything is for you to practice. And don't feel shy about missing shots in math either. It's okay to make mistakes. What you want to do is learn what you're um, learn, you know, what went wrong and keep making adjustments, keep making adjustments until you get better and better and better. Okay. All right. So if you need help with this stuff, I'm going to point uh, you towards uh, probably like my algebra one course uh, where I cover that algebra one, algebra two. And I even touch on this in my pre-algebra course as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.